podium at this time. If you want to say something about that, you know. We want to make sure that if you have necrologist reports that you will get those to uh, Dr. Riddick uh, immediately following this session. Dr. Body has also asked me to remind you that at the bookstore, Talbot Shaw's new book, East of Eden, is there at well. In Dallas, Texas, there is a preacher who pastors and gives spiritual direction to the Friendship West Baptist Church, a thralling and thriving, exciting, vibrant church there. One, because of the way the Holy Spirit has synergized the life of Dr. Freddie Haynes. One of the tensions that is discussed in ministry is those who believe in scholarship are sometimes antagonistic against those who are anchored in charismatic movement and those on the opposite end critical sometimes of those who are anchored in scholarship. Every now and then you run across a person who the Holy Spirit has put it all together in and that's in the person of Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes. He's blessed us on other occasions in many of our various churches, and today President has asked him to come and share with us. So Hampton, please help me welcome to the pulpit the pastor of the Friendship West Church in Dallas, Texas, the Reverend Freddie Haynes. Let me express my appreciation to Dr. Billy Curtis, our Vice President, for blessing me with such a kind and generous, even gratuitous uh, presentation and introduction. I also want to appreciatively applaud and acknowledge uh, the pioneering, uh, trailblazing president of Hampton, Dr. Susan Johnson Cook, who is a blessing to the body of Christ. Her warmth, her charm, her dynam dynamism have indeed blessed the body of Christ. Our world is a better place because of Dr. Sue J. And I thank God for her. I thank God for all of those who have been so kind as to allow the grace of God uh, to touch their hearts and open up this door of opportunity for me to share with you uh, during this prestigious Hampton Ministers Conference. I also want to express my appreciation to Dr. Timothy Body, And of course, this particular hour, uh, we acknowledge uh, one who is legendary for his leadership uh, as it relates to ministering to preachers. Uh, Dr. Vaughn is a blessing not only in Baltimore, but up and down this East Coast. Uh, Dr. Vaughn blesses many, and so it's a blessing to uh, be here during this hour, and it's a blessing to share with you here at Hampton. I consider uh, Hampton to be uh, the Mecca experience for those of us who are African American ministers and musicians and church leaders in that uh, those who are of the Islamic faith, they go to Mecca, uh, but we who love the Lord and the African-American church tradition every June look forward to coming to Hampton. And so it's a blessing to be here and it's a great joy to share with you in this conference. I have uh, with me several members of our uh, pastoral staff at Friendship West and their presence means a lot to me because uh, much of what I'm able to do is because of a competent staff uh, that blesses uh, our efforts there in Dallas, Texas. All week long we have been blessed with five-star anointed presentations. This has been a homiletical Hall of Fame lineup all week long and so the the members of the committee are to be commended for what they have done in terms of selecting uh, those who are programmed as participants up until now. Uh, fortunately, you have a good panel uh, that's coming up after uh, this, but uh, please do not fault me for being here right now. Take it out on the committee uh, that has done so well up till now and now has had the uh, misfortune of burdening you with me, uh, but it is a pleasure to be here and I thank God for this honor. I want to share with you for a few moments from a passage of scripture found in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. And there in the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles we see some manifestations of this shift that we've been talking about all week long. Acts chapter 16 and beginning at the sixth verse. Hear now the word of the Lord from the New International Version translation 
of the Greek New Testament. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mycenae and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you so much for this moment pregnant with possibilities. We thank you for what you are up to in our lives and in our respective ministries. We thank you for Jesus and for his total sufficiency. For he is our Lord, liberator, savior, healer, and redeemer. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you now for the perfect and powerful teaching and preaching ministry of your Holy Spirit. And for the awesome, amazing way that your spirit ministers to us at our point of need. We don't know how you do it, but you always know what we need to hear and when we need to hear it. So afresh, we confess we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, Lord, what shall we do? So feel free now to speak to us. Remove anything that would distract us. I don't want to get in the way of what you want to do or say, so hide me behind the cross and help us to see Jesus and glorify you, our Father who art in heaven. Empty me of myself. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Stand in my body. Take my mind and think your thoughts. Take my mouth. It's your mouthpiece. Now declare your word. Order our steps in your word. You promised your word would not return void. Boldly we believe that. Don't let anybody leave here the way they came. Order our steps in your word. And now anoint me to teach and preach your word. And Lord, have your way. In the matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mycenae, and went down to Troas during the night. Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over into Macedonia and help us. I want to put a tag on this text and for a few moments with your prayers as we look at manifestations of the shift. I want to talk about when life's delays make you miss your connection. When life's delays make you miss your connection. To be blessed and burden with a vision is to be set up as it were for a collision with disappointment, defeat, and yes, delays and denial. Whenever you have dared to dream, at that moment you discover that life almost sets you up in order to let you down. Why? Because when you are blessed and burdened with a vision, you almost are set up for a collision with defeat, denial, disappointment, and delays. Langston Hughes understood this, and as a consequence of his own experience, he poetically shared with us what it means to have a dream driven into a dead end of a delay. Langston Hughes had been gifted with the gift of poetry and even though his father had walked out on he and his mother, Langston Hughes found solace in this gift of poetry. But his father walked back into his life during his years in high school and doused with discouragement the dreams of his son, telling him that there was no money in poetry. As a consequence, he took Langston Hughes out of school down to Mexico to work the mines there and while working the mines in Mexico Langston Hughes poetically penned his pain as he angrily asked what happens to a dream deferred does it dry up like a raisin in the sun fester like a sore and then run or does it stink like rotten meat crushed and sugar over like a syrupy sweet or maybe it sags like a heavy load or does it just explode when you are blessed and burdened with a vision you are set up for a collision 
collision with disappointment, denials, and yes, even defeat. And my brothers and sisters, someone is looking at me right now, and in your own life and ministry, you know something about the aggravation and frustration of deferred dreams and handcuffed hopes. You know something about the aggravation and frustration of having a dream that has been driven headlong into a dead end. Well, since you're not feeling me, let me see if I can illustrate this idea by transparently testifying. The year was 1991. Unbeknownst to me, I was the beneficiary, but also burdened with a shift that had been sovereignly orchestrated by the Almighty in that our church had just come out of a civil war of a court battle, the battle we had emerged victorious from. However, I emerged from that battle with my own wounds and scars that I was still attempting to work through. Understand that after the battle was over, I was hurt due to the fact that not only had people turned on me, but there were those who did not speak up during that difficult season in my ministry. It's amazing that people you reach out to and help are nowhere to be found when you stand in need of help yourself. Well, my brothers and sisters, I'm scarred from the experience, but with undiscourageable determination, we emerge from that civil war of a court battle there in Dallas, Texas. And I won't forget because shortly after the battle was over, I discovered that a facility that we were trying to purchase right there in Dallas, close to the facility that we own, that facility had been sold during the court battle to another church. Of course, my dreams have been dashed, but unbeknownst to me, the God above us, who's got nothing but love for us, was sovereignly orchestrating our circumstances and shifting us, even though I was unaware of that. Well, I was fortunate in that I was privileged to attend the first African, African American Leadership Summit that was sponsored by the late, great Dr. Dr. Leon Howard Sullivan. Dr. Sullivan had convened this session to take place in Cote d'Ivoire, Abidjan, there on the western coast of Mother Africa. I shall long remember in the treasure chest of my fondest memories having the, uh, having the experience of checking out the motherland. But just as the session ended, we flew from Abidjan to Gore Island or there in Dakar, Senegal. And on that last day, we were privilege to go to the slave castles in Gore Island. It was a transformative experience that every person of Ebony Hue needs to have. There, the slave castles in Gore Island, I was reminded of the suffering yet victorious strength of our African American mothers and fathers who endured and came out on top in spite of the heinous horrors of the Middle Passage and slavery. But hold on, I must continue confess that I was looking forward to getting back to the United States because I was to preach that night, that Wednesday night, the anniversary, the pastoral anniversary of one of my mentors, the late great Dr. Manuel Scott Sr. However, because our flight was delayed leaving Dakar, Senegal, I found out that I was going to miss my connection flight there at New York's Kennedy Airport. Unfortunately, it was the last plane that would get me via a American Airlines from New York's Kennedy Airport to Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. I was delayed in Dakar, Senegal, but I knew that God was going to make up for the delay because as soon as we got on the plane, I figured that a tailwind would greet us, but instead of a tailwind greeting us, a headwind hit us. We're already late, three hours behind schedule. I only have two hours between my scheduled arrival in New York at Kennedy and my departure from Kennedy to Dallas Fort Worth but when we arrived in New York I discovered that not only was a headwind hindering us from getting back on time but then because of air traffic control we were placed in a holding pattern imagine that we were delayed leaving and then we were hit by a headwind and then we were placed in a holding pattern you're not feeling me ever 
evidently because there I was on a mission for the master I was to preach that night the pastoral anniversary of Dr. Scott surely that was on the anointed agenda of the Almighty surely God recognized that I was out on his word doing what God had called me to do but instead of arriving in New York on time or ahead of time I missed my connection there I am in New York I missed my connection and then to magnify my misery I'm broke busted and disgusted because all of the money I had I spent buying gifts there in Senegal and in Abidjan so there I am with no money I don't have a credit card because we've just come out of a court battle at Friendship West I'm broke busted disgusted I've missed my connection I make my way to the tech to the ticket counter and there at the ticket counter a sister with an obvious attitude adds to my agony because there she lets me know that the last flight for Dallas has just left and the only way you're going to get to Dallas is to stay overnight in New York I have no money I have no credit card she says well I that's not my problem I said but you don't understand I have to preach tonight in Dallas well you should have made your connection she responds I'm having a hard time I'm toe up from the flow up and feel like I can't get up because on the one hand my flight was delayed from Dakar to New York on the other hand I was hit with a headwind and then to make matters worse I have no money I'm stuck like Chuck in New York in a situation I need to get out of but I lack the resources to do anything about now let me back up and exegete existentially my experience for somebody is in the house today and you know something about my experience from Dakar to New York you know something what happened with me well on the one hand I was victim of a delay that was beyond my control a delay that occurred in my experience that was orchestrated no hampered by forces beyond my control have you ever been there you knew where you wanted to go and yet you could not get there because there were forces beyond your control that got in your way but then secondly not only that but notice if you will that I not only could I not get where I needed to be but on top of that my delay was negatively impacting other people I care about you see it's one thing for a delay to mess up my stuff it's another thing when there are persons I love and care about who are messed up because of the delay that has hit me but then finally I lack the resources to financially handle the delay I was in have you ever been there where a delay hit you and then you lack the resources and the wherewithal to handle that delay well that's where I was and somebody has come to church and you has come to Hampton and you have refused to be incarcerated by your isness you are obsessed with your ontological altness and yet in spite of your dream and your vision here you are in Hampton today honestly testifying that a delay has made you miss your connection well if a delay has made you miss your connection hang out with me homiletically because in our text we meet the gospel globetrotter and trailblazing theologian from Tarsus the articulate African Apostle Paul that prolific penman of much of the New Testament as we know it and the book lets us know that Paul is now precluded and prohibited from fulfilling a, a purpose that he believes God has called him to by a delay a disruption and some disappointments notice if you will that this follows on the heels of his successful first missionary journey with his road dog Barnabas where the book tells us at the end of chapter 14 they celebrate with the other Christian leaders the fact that God has opened up a door of faith and opportunity for ministry among the Gentiles but hold on in chapter 15 the Bible lets us know that the gospel globetrotter and his redemptive road dog Barnabas are about to get back on the road to continue strengthening the churches that they administered to earlier on the first journey but the Bible says they fuss feud and fall out over the role of John Mark because John Mark had deserted them during the first journey Paul says I'm through with John Mark Barnabas being true to his name says 
says, no, we're going to give the brother another chance. So severe is their dispute that they fuss few, they fall out and go their separate ways. This must have devastated the heart of the gospel globetrotter for Barnabas was the one who had stood by him when no one else would. Barnabas was the one who had believed in him when no one else had. Barnabas and Paul have now gone their separate ways but a hold on the Bible says in chapter 16 Timothy and Silas now accompany the gospel globetrotter and can you see them on the screen of your anointed imagination as Paul Timothy and Silas continue the journey but wait verse 6 says they aspire to go to Asia but their aspirations are aborted they then want to go to Bithynia but that is blocked by the Holy Spirit hold on the Bible lets us know they are delayed and they are denied everything that Paul has envisioned and dreamt of has met up with delay denial and disappointment and somebody needs to understand when you dare walk in faith with God there will be those miserable and melancholic moments where burdened with a vision you come into a collision with defeat denial disappointment and delay that's where we meet the gospel globetrotter now on the shores of the Aegean there in Troas can you see Paul with his head in his hand saying God I'm out here on your word doing what you've called me to do and yet I can't get it done God I need to know what's going on well my brothers and sisters if you've been there or if you are there where life's delays have made you miss your connection here's the good news of the gospel and that is whenever life's delays make you miss your connection God is sovereignly superintending your experiences in that God will use your let down so you can be set up to catch up with God's bigger vision plan and purpose for your lives you're not feeling me like I need you to watch the text do you not know that in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Jesus our Lord and liberator had given to the Christians to the apostles his vision of their mission the vision was simply that you are going to receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me Jerusalem Judea Samaria and all over the world but wait from chapter 1 verse 8 until the end of chapter 7 the Bible says they are maintaining ministry in Jerusalem hold on chapter 1 verse 8 says the vision is to go to the uttermost parts of the world but chapter 7 up through chapter 7 they are stuck in Jerusalem but chapter 8 says that persecution breaks out there in Jerusalem and in verse 4 it says they went everywhere preaching the word of God but hold on the Bible says that now as a consequence of persecution as a consequence of suffering I love this they suffered into the shift that had been sovereignly prepared for them you missed your shout cue in a real sense they were problemed into their purpose you missing your shout cue I'm trying to let you know they were disappointed into a divine appointment with their date with destiny God is the only one I know who can use the hell that we're going through the disappointments that hurt us to set us up to end up on a level we never would have ended up on had we not experience that disappointment y'all still not getting this thing let me see if I can make it live show sure enough now the Bible tells us via chapter 8 they go everywhere preaching the gospel geographically they go south into Africa and they go east towards Asia but the gospel has yet to head west towards Europe and now as a consequence of Paul experiencing delay defeat denial and disappointment the gospel goes where it had not intended to go because God said I'm going to use what lets you down to set you up so you can catch up with my original plan and purpose that's a whole lot bigger than you you're still not getting this thing last year last year I came across something that helped me to understand this there was a brother who in the late 80s was growing up in the Virgin Islands and this brother had dreamt of becoming an Olympic swimmer they only had one swimming pool there on the I one Olympic swim size swimming pool on the island of St. Thomas in the Virgin 
islands and that swimming pool was destroyed and demolished by Hurricane Andrew. Of course, he's messed up and tore up. Why? Because he had dreamt of becoming an Olympic swimmer, but the brother giving up his dream is told by another, check it out, you have basketball skills, I'm sure. He went to Wake Forest, drafted by the San Antonio Spurs, and now one of the best basketball players in the NBA is one Tim Duncan, who last year won the MVP, both in the regular season and in the championship. You're not getting this thing. He set out to be a swimmer, but God destroyed that dream, let him down, but set him up, and he ended up on a level he never would have gone to had Hurricane Andrew not swept through the Virgin Islands. Well, if you're in the his house and filling me, I know you're saying, preacher, you in my seat, you bowling down my alley, because I know there's a shift going on, but I want to make sure that I understand the manifestations of that shift. Would you mind unpacking the passage so we can clothe ourselves with its truth? Because somebody's come to Hampton today. The shift is on, and even though the shift is on, you want to make sure that you are where God would have you to be, using your delays, denials, disappointments, and defeats. Well, glad you asked. Watch me unpack the passage. Number one, the text lets us know, and this ought to shout you right here, that God works the night shift using shut doors to open our eyes to new ministry possibilities. Y'all missed that thing. Let me do it again. God will work the night shift. Now that's enough to shout you right there to know that God works the night shift. And whenever there is a shift, God works the night shift, orchestrating that shift. And the shift will eventuate in your lift to another level. When God works the night shift, y'all look like you don't believe me. You know what the night shift is. The night shift is Moses down at the sea see in front of him, Egyptians behind him, and all night long, the Bible says an east wind blew and made a way out of nowhere. You're still not getting this. Paul and Silas were thrown in jail later in this same chapter, and the book says at midnight, they began to get their praise on, and while at midnight getting their praise on, the book lets us know God stomped his foot in glory, activated the Richter scale in Philippi, and we have the first jailhouse rock because God works the night shift but hold on the book says God works the night shift using shut doors to open our eyes to new ministry possibilities God works the night shift using shut doors to open our eyes to new ministry possibilities a man from Macedonia says, come over into Macedonia and help us. That's the vision. Stop right there. Vision. Because there is no navigating the shift without receiving a divine vision. What's vision? Glad you asked. Etymologically, in the Greek, the word vision means revelation. It means disclosure. It means unveiling. It means God bearing naked God's self. You're not feeling me. So let me go not Greek or Webster. Let me give you Haynes. Vision is simply faith foresight ah, that grants you insight that's beyond your eyesight. Huh. Okay, I'm going to get you. Vision is God giving you faith in your future tense that orders your steps in your present tense, overruling whatever was in your past tense. I ain't coming through. Uh, uh, vision, vision, vision. Here it is. Vision is a preview of coming attractions. Now, now, of course, you know, I'm borrowing that from going to movies because whenever you go to the movies, I've discovered something that before the main featured attraction is shown, uh, that you get to see the previews. Now, the previews simply are not the whole movie that you're going to see. The previews let you know what's coming on later on if you hang around and are willing to pay the price. The previews simply say, this ain't out just yet, but, but it's in production, and if you hang out long enough, 
enough, rest assured if you're willing to pay the price and come on back, you're going to get to see the whole thing. But right now, you just get a preview. But guess what? I've discovered something. When you go to the movies and they show you the previews, you cannot see the previews until first it gets dark. The lights are on, but then when the lights begin to dim, that lets you know that the previews are about to take place. Here in the text, it gets dark, and there in the dark, Paul receives a vision of man from Macedonia saying, come over and help us, and you will agree with me. This is a dark time, but it's prime time for the black church to raise up and receive a fresh vision of new ministry possibilities from Almighty God. These are 